I pushed the live button already. Well, for those that are have joined me, thank you for joining. And uh, let's see who else comes on. So, um, as you guys know, I have all these pieces to paint that needs to go onto the Eternia landscape. And so I've been doing kind of a taste a test proof with this part right here. This side I didn't use any primer on, and this side I used primer on. And this took three coats to clear it up. This is just one coat with the primer. And this is the one I'm scrapping because it didn't print right. See all those little ridges right there? And the nice clean new one doesn't have all those ridges like that. Now there is some spots I gotta dremel first before I paint this, so we'll take care of that first. And then we'll get painting. And, hold on, what I also did was I put together this quick little box to store them all in so when I'm done I can take them downstairs and paint them with a clear coat and as many of you guys know the clear coat I use let me do a sound check really quick sound checks to store them all in so when I'm done I can that sounds good huh hopefully this is not still on private I guess I could go check really quick to make sure I'm not just talking to myself I'll be right back since is anybody if anybody else is on here give me a give me a uh, hello, so I know somebody else has joined me. Otherwise, I, I'm going to go check to make sure it's not set to private because nobody's here according to my numbers. There we go. Hey, Charles. I guess it is working. Hooray. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on some of the sanding. Sanding. Get my Dremel tool out. And then we'll sand this one, and then we'll paint it, and then we'll sand the next one and paint it, and so on. And... Hey, Michael. Hey, Mike. Wow, Michael and Mike. And Master Far. All these M, M names except for Charles. Just all these little spots that were used when it was printing. sanded and ready to paint. <sighs> Let me get a brush here to brush off all the dust. Now if you look really close you can see there are three little triangle windows there. There they are, very hard to see, as well as our front door. To goes into the palace. All right, now it is time to paint. Now I have some terracotta colors here I'm using. I have uh, this one right here, which is more pinkish in color. Terracotta pink. And uh, I'm probably going to paint the palace in this color. Then I have terracotta orange that I'll probably be painting all the buildings in. Now I know in the cartoon they're all pink. I just can't have that much pink, sorry you guys. I know that there's a lot of pink in the cartoon. Um, these are all obviously more orange than pink. So it's kind of a mixture. You can see here it's pink and orange. I'm gonna actually paint this gray to match my giant one that I made as well as the bridges. So there'll be some pink, some oranges, and some grays that we'll be using for this painting today. Hey, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. It was funny. Last night before I went to bed, I was scanning in the space between um, um, the central tower and the um, Grayskull Tower to make the bridge. So I'm going to make a bridge that works really good there. It fits perfectly. So I wanted to get a really good scan on it. And so I got that scanned in. I tried scanning the, the old bridge last night from the 80s, but it just wouldn't work. It's too symmetrical. So I'm going to have to probably scan it as two, two halves and put it together on the computer for it to work. 
All right, let's go and start with this pink terracotta. Pink terracotta. Let me raise this up so I know I'm gonna get out of camera range. And he's like, hey, I can't see. I can't see, man. And you guys know when I paint, I like to uh, keep it really thin. So it's gonna take three coats by the time we're done. But that is okay. Three coats is fine with me. So this first coat's gonna be partly see-through. Oh, I see, I'm already at a camera angle. I knew that was gonna happen. There we go. I should look at my iPad once in a while to see if I'm in camera shot or not. Let me take a look. Oh, I guess the delay is pretty far behind. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. Bump, bump. Da, 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 da. Those little triangle windows are going to be totally invisible once this is all painted. Kind of stinks. I should have made them deeper. I almost did when I was designing it. And it looked cool on the computer screen. But I should have known when it prints it would be really shallow. Shadow. You're so shadow. Okay, yeah, that's about a little beyond halfway. I was gonna try to paint halfway so I'd have finger grippage, but it's like I've gone past the halfway mark. So today was fun. Today I went out to lunch at a place called uh, um, Avocado. It's a Mexican restaurant, and uh, I had myself some uh, chewy chewy changas. So it was chicken ones. They were pretty good. Um, I actually really enjoyed them. I told the guy. Uh, our waiter, I said, man, I said, those were good. I said, I am definitely coming back here again. They are, they are something that I would like to enjoy again. It also came with uh, beans and rice. Beans and rice. And I ate the beans and rice as well. It was really good. It was fun. There was probably about, I don't know, 15 of us there, I'm guessing, from church after church. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I didn't know they did this at our church, but I guess a bunch of uh, people that have been there a long time, they just been going out to eat as friends for a long time and started inviting other people. And I got invited three weeks ago and I'm like, yeah, I'll come. And I've been coming every time since I was invited to be my wife. And the first time it was uh, at, uh, oh, where was it at? Uh, some pizza place, Giorgio's, I think, or something. And it was pretty good. And then last week it was at Bob Burgers and Brew, and that was pretty good. And today it was at Avocado, which was also really good. It's a lot of fun, though. Fellowship, friendship, hanging out, chit-chatting about things that matter and some things that just don't. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, you know what? I was probably way out of focus there, wasn't I? I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, let me zoom this out so I have a better shot of being in, in camera view. All right, so that one is the pink. And the only one to paint in pink is just the palace, I think. I think everything else is going to be in orange. I'll paint this in orange and see how it looks. You know what? I have a broken building in here. I'll paint the broken building in orange. That way I can test it out and see how it looks. And if it looks good, then I'll do the rest in orange. Where is that broken building? Where is that broken building? There it is. When you print this stuff, it comes out so thin and flimsy sometimes. Just when I was cleaning it with my, with my toothbrush. Don't worry, it's not the same toothbrush I use on my teeth. I, uh, I uh, um, ripped the side out with the brush when I was doing the cleaning. Now it's funny, it's these little buildings here, these itty bitty small little buildings. They actually have a floor in them. I built a th floor, you can see it because it's kind of see-through. Let me get a light and shine it through. Where's the light? Uh, I know I have a bunch. Oh, over there, here we go. I found a blue light. The flashlight's blue, but the actual. 
and you can see the floor right in there in the shadow across it because it's such a thin material and uh it, later on i thought why did i make floors in these why did i take the time to make these with second floors and some with third floors this one here you can really see the floor through the windows maybe that's why because i knew you'd be able to see it in the window in the window and this one here has two floors in it so it's got one lower and one higher and it's just kind of funny to sit there and do that kind of detail when you're not going to really see that once uh, you have it on the thing anyway all right let's get the orange out and stop messing around I'll put the orange in a white hat. We have to Oofnin brand spanking new. My wife just got these just for me for this purpose. I said, I need some terracotta colors. And uh, she's like, well, what? They have different shades of terracotta. I said, I don't know. I guess, I guess pinkish. Go for the pinkish and something normal. So she uh, found all these different terracotta colors and came back with an orange one and a pink one. I'm like, that will work. That will work. So here's the orange one. Let's see what it says on there. Clay pot. And what's this one say? Oh, this one says rose terracotta. Earthly rose. There you go. Those are the colors that I'm using. Oh, the orange is thinner. I can feel it squishes out much easier than the pink did. Okay, we'll start painting this. I know this should be orange. And we'll see how it looks. And who knows, we ought to decide to paint them all pink once I'm all done. Looks like tangerine. Okay, you know what? Eric, if you're on here, I don't know if you are or not. You're right, man. I'm going all pink. The orange does not look good at all. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, I scratched what I said earlier. I'm just using the Rose Earth Terracotta. You will set this orange aside. It's funny, look at all the paint caps from the other day, painting the whole entire landscape. Let me go wash this off really quick. I'll be right back. I got myself a yellow washcloth to dry it. You yellow. All right. Did he reply to any of my questions? Let's see. Did you ever do parts for Transformers? No. Uh, will you sell prints of files of these? Yes. When I finish my set, I will sell um, an unpainted version, maybe, of these. Um... Maybe just the files, I don't know. You know what, I'll probably put them on Shapeways. I'll probably put the buildings on Shapeways and sell the platforms. That'll probably make the most sense because these are such a pain to, to print here at the house. So I'll probably make it so if you want to get the pieces, you'd buy them on Shapeways and then I'd sell you the platform to put them on because Shapeways will charge way too much to print the platform for you because it's huge, huge. So I'll probably do that. And I probably won't sell any painted ones. You'll probably be stuck painting them yourself. But if I, I figured out that the time it takes me to break off all the supports on these and get them ready 
it's just way too much time and uh um it's just it just wouldn't wouldn't it wouldn't be cost effective for me to actually produce all these little parts but you can get them on shapeways and then i'll sell the platforms all right let's get back to our pink you know i'm getting a new brush I'm getting a new brush one that works like it should all right this one's nice and soft it's the painting them all the same color all the way through i'm just gonna get one giant brush Nose hairs are still falling out of this stuff. Look at that. All right. So we're going with the pink. If we're going on the orange. Now, one time I thought about dipping these in the paint, but it has to be pretty thin to do a dip. Now, I could have maybe, you know, made an airbrushable or something, but as you guys know, I don't actually own an airbrush. Actually, you know what? I do want to an airbrush. I forgot about that. My friend Steve gave me one of his old airbrushes. I used it once for one job and just kind of clogged it all up, made a mess out of it. And I was like, man, I sure honked that poor brush up. It was not good. There's not a lot of stuff to hold on to those holes. Try to shove my pinky in there. There we go. Now, if I was smart, I would have bought more resin and printed these in a different color besides blue. Uh, I should have printed it in something that was close to the terracotta color. It would have made it a lot easier to paint. And uh, then I would have had to, have to do so much interior because... Obviously, the other buildings, those floors are going to stay blue. There's going to be no way to paint some of those floors inside those buildings. So, that is going to be a bummer. All right. It's a nice thin coat on there. The other coat should apply pretty well. On to the next piece. Yes, that's the rose. That's the right one. It's funny. I got this good friend. Let me see if any other questions you have. All right. Excellent. He prefers to uh, do his self-painting anyway. Perfect. Besides that, you probably wouldn't like my paint job anyway. When you see what the what the um, landscape looks like, you're like, oh. Someone yesterday even said, kind of jokingly, I should get somebody else to paint it. And uh, probably rightfully so. I mean, it was quite the mess. My paint job for my, uh, is that going to fit in there? Fit, fit. Hey, it does. So let's see. Any other questions why I'm painting this? Uh, would you be willing to make and sell transformer parts? Well, that's a good question. I actually one time made some just one time for somebody, just the Ener Energon cubes, and that was it. I haven't really made any others. Um, I suppose I might be into it someday, but the problem is I'd probably want to buy the transformers to fit the parts to make sure they worked. So that's part of the issues, is you'd have to actually make sure they fit and work. So that that could be a problem. No, I got stuck on on that. Okay, we'll paint this one. It says no hole in the bottom. But this one's going to require a little bit of sanding. Let me go and sand this really quick over my garbage can this time. It's going to take a little bit of sanding. Uh, whew. You guys can see my mess down here now. See, here's the pieces from the bridge already left over. It was a broken claw. The claw.
Oh, that dust is coming right up. There we go. That sits much flatter now. Let me go wash that off when the dust settles. And I'll be right back. Back to the yellow cloth. Still a wet spot down there. I'll just set that aside to keep drying. I like the Mesoamerican Step Pyramid. Thanks. All right, let's go ahead and get back to painting. I want to test it on this little building first to see how it goes with the windows. I'm afraid the paint's going to clog the windows up. So let's just see if I can uh, get that on there without clogging the windows. And this is my messed up one. Oh yeah, it's just, it's just too thick. Too thick. It's like the more I try to unclog the windows, the worse they get. Oops, I'm out of range, out of view, out of view. I guess it's not too terrible. Cause you can still see some of those windows. Put on the second and third coats, we'll see how it looks. Gotta jam those bristles in there to clean those out. Oop. Sorry, you guys. Yeah, I suppose using an airbrush would have been way better. Too late. Actually, I asked my wife to find a spray paint of this originally. And that's my broken one. I was just seeing how it looked. That's not too bad. I think that, that should kind of work. Perfect. No. Good enough for our first coat. Sure. I probably should use a smaller brush on it. All right, let's get to this piece. The piece I just washed a few minutes ago. Then we'll go to a smaller brush for, uh, you know what? I'm gonna actually put my second coats on first. Then we'll go to the smaller brushes for the other pieces. Let's see, pinky swear, got my pinky in there. Let me zoom this back out, sorry you guys. Yeah, I've told my wife many times, it'd be nice to have a camera person but I guess it'd be pretty boring for her to sit here and just adjust the camera a little bit at a time while I keep moving it around. Your job is to sit there and watch me paint for hours and adjust the camera so everybody online can see what I'm doing all the time, close up nice views. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty boring for her.
All right. Not too shabby. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Any more large pieces like that? Oh, I got one more. Then we'll come back and start repainting these. I guess the models will put them up here so they can be ready for their second coats. Ah. There we go. So it's funny, I hear this rose, it kind of brings joy to my being. I had this friend, her name's Rose, and uh, she's uh, quite a bit older. She's, a little, she's an old lady from uh, the, the uh, Philippines, and uh, she makes this awesome chicken adobo. It is so good. When I first met her, it was at a potluck at church, and uh, um, I saw her, her plate or her dish she made, and I'm like, is that adobo? And she goes, you know adobo? I go, oh, I know adobo. And uh, so uh, she's made special meals for me many times since then. She goes, I brought adobo, I brought this, or I brought that. And she has this really good chicken she makes too that's not adobo. And uh, so whenever Rose is, is cooking, I'm like, oh yeah. And she's always happy to see me eat it. I'm always happy to eat it. It is a great combination. I enjoy eating it. She enjoys watching me eat it. So. Together we are happy. So it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of funny. All right, I will stick stick this in my need a second coat pile. And let's get to town and get this get this one going let's get it going now you know two coats might be enough i thought it would take three but that's looking pretty good pretty good <laughs> spin, spin. Oh yeah, two coats will be enough. That looks good. And there is Prince Adam's home, the Royal Palace. Dun dun dun! In terracotta pink. Thanks to my wife for getting the terracotta pink. And thanks to Eric for saying, you should do pink, man. Otherwise I would have done it all in orange. I guess it's not that terrible. I mean, it did work for the cartoon, right? Yeah, looks nice. Da -da -da -da. Oh, my light is dead. Let me get another light. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Do you play Battletech or some other game? No, I don't play any real small miniature games. Um, it sounds kind of funny. When my kids were little, I made up a game for them called Hebrews Battle Board. 
and uh, in it you use uh, you use He-Man figures, of course, right? And uh, they can hold up to two weapons and armor and stuff, and uh, you change the dice roll and everything else depending on what they have on the figure. And uh, that was always a fun thing to play. We'd we'd set up little hexagon triangles everywhere and dice roll to control that. And we had large hexagon triangles too. The small ones were three inches. The large ones were 12. The large ones were for uh, um, if you're in a vehicle or a cat, which of course added you, gave you more uh, um, block points and to hit points for He-Man if he had like a battle axe or something on the cat. And uh, that's what we'd play. So not really miniatures so much, but we actually use the full five and a half inch figures. And I call it Hebrews Battle Board because I actually made software that would run with it. And the software would keep track of uh, all your hit points of your characters and when they were knocked out. And if you wanted to, you could just type in heal and it would give everyone one turn of healing. So it could help the knockout go faster in case you had too many guys knocked out. And then each turn would give so much healing to all the characters left on the board until they got to their maximum. It was, it was kind of a fun game. Um, we would use uh, Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain as well as, to, as part of the, the play things that we would use on the floor with all the, all the um, hexagon pieces. And we had a tape measure set up in three inch increments. And that tape measure was used to measure when, how far distance it was for shooting and things if somebody was to uh, shoot a gun and if they had a dual gun like uh, like uh, Roboto, then you would roll two 10-sided dice. If they had one gun, one big blaster gun, then you'd roll one 20-sided dice. So two 10-sided dice would give you more of an even keel of a uh, roll, where a one 20-sided dice, you may get a low number pretty easily, or a high number. So it would give you a higher... Um, so the two tens is more consistent, but the 20 side could be a lot more beneficial because it's easier to roll one high number than it is to roll two. I should have used the other brush to hold that. Now I got terracotta pink over my finger. Uh, uh. Oops, sorry you guys. I am way out of focus there, on the, or way out of uh, alignment there on that one. Okay, it's time to get two in here. Uh, just so I can pinch them to hold it in place a little better. Yeah, someday I'll have to make a video explaining all the rules for Hebrews Battleboard and may make a new version of the software because it was written a long time ago for Windows 95, so... It is definitely old, and it doesn't run anymore on the new Windows. And it was cool, too, to show all the figures standing in the doorway of Castle Grayskull when you, when you choose them. Each figure had a, a three-letter uh, designation to pull them up, so like Mad Arms was uh, um, M-A-A, -A, and then he-Man was uh, H-M and so on. So each figure you type in their little three-digit code and it would show you their hit points and stuff and then you would say who hit who and it would keep track of all of it. Who hit who, man? Now this one has no... no way to hang on to it. So to paint this one in two different sessions. So I can only get so low. How low can you go? Did my light already go off? Really? That light already died? No. I'm kind of excited. I'm going to my best friend's house tomorrow. And I'm hoping to have this all painted and done to take over there and show him my awesome landscape. 
I haven't been there in a couple weeks. Usually we go there and play games. We play this game called Sequence. If you guys ever played it or not, it's a lot of fun. You draw a card. Now you actually you hold five cards, and then you play one of the spots on the board that matches the card. You get five in a row, like Connect Four. It could be up, down, left, right, or diagonal. And once you get two sets of those, you win. And every time you play a card, you draw a card. So you always have five in your hand. Maybe it's six. I don't know. Yeah, I think it is six, actually. But it's a lot of fun. I will set this here so I don't forget to paint the, the bottom. Okay, any more big parts that should be orange? I kind of want to do the building. Look at this cool building. Look how awesome this thing is. I know, I shouldn't groove on my own stuff. My wife always teases me about that. She goes, you're always grooving on your own stuff. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I am. All right, let's change out this light. Oh, I hit my funny bone on my chair. Okay, let's get a smaller brush. We'll try this one right here. Let's see if this one works good for the buildings. We'll paint this awesome, cool building first since it's kind of a medium-sized one. I love the antennas on this one. And I got this, like I said, I was just copying the, look at the little bridge on there across the top. And it's got little doorways on both sides of the bridge. Where the, you, know, you can imagine the characters running across there. It'd be so cool to print this in full size at like 35 times the size. There's the doorways for them to walk through. But this would be huge. I mean, you see how big that guard tower was once I made it full size. I said probably uh, just about fill up your room. So all the floors will still be blue inside. I know, I should have printed it in a different color, but that's okay. They all like blue rugs. Blue rug. Do 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 I can feel how thin these parts are. One little squeeze of my fingers and it will snap. It's kind of a kind of a little little scary a little bit I'm trying to get these things painted why Having it not break on you. I'm debating whether to do a wash on these or not. I think I am. I think the wash look really cool. Um, I was thinking about using the wash that's made for skin. It's a skin wash. Let's see how it looks. I'll probably test it on that broken building first. So I'll have to finish painting the broken building so I can go back and do a couple wash tests on it. I can also do a wash test on the other palace over there that's half painted. I could probably finish painting that. Stick something in there. Nope, nope. Mm, maybe. There we go. Get a couple brushes in there. This would be an awesome little playset, though. Just as one building by itself would be cool. Oh! Unless I break it. It's very Star Wars y ish. You can imagine this being in the Republic. Which is that bridge across the top right there. You can imagine Anakin running across with uh, Obi Wan. Doing some kind of lightsaber duel with somebody else. I 
And there are actually a lot of things that's very Star Wars-ish in the He-Man series. Especially when uh, they made new adventures and they made uh, Darth, not Darth Vader, it's uh, um, Skeletor half robotic. It's like, uh, you know, that's what Darth Vader is, right? Yeah, we know. I thought you guys did. Turning Darth Vader into, uh, or turning, uh, Skeletor into Darth Vader and turning uh, He-Man into Luke with a glowing sword. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. A half hyper or half uh, cybernetic bad guy against a guy with a glowing sword. And you think about it is uh, the first thing we've seen of New Adventures was actually the... Um, the lighted figures. So they actually did have a lighted He-Man sword figure, which was wasn't it wasn't released as New Adventures, but it was the beginning of the idea of the New Adventures. Now I wish I would have used the um, the um, uh, primer on this first. Would have really helped for this piece. All right, there's my pink castle. It kills me. I know you guys are probably all laughing online. Oh, ha, ha. You know how much Hebrew hates pink now. He's painting his whole town pink. Yep. Painting the whole town pink. Well, you remember that video I did the whole giant complaining about uh, Prince Adam and his white shirt being pink. That was a uh, irritating. It's like, oh, his shirt's supposed to be white. Not pink. Not pink. I can see now these buildings are gonna be a pain to paint. I can see clearly now these buildings are going to be a pain to paint. I can see clearly now there's nothing to hold on to. Uh, uh, stand. Erp. I made little indented roofs on these too. All right, I should probably check your guys' questions for a few minutes and get back to painting. Oh, almost out of battery power on my iPad. Hey, Cal Ness, thanks, thanks for the donation. I really appreciate it. That was very, very kind of you. Mike says, coming together great. Uh, Charles says, Todd, you have great ideas. Uh, why are you making Teeny Eternia, by the way? It's too small even for the Moto Mini game. Yes, it is. This is actually for my stop motion video. And what it's for is um, the establishing shot for this palace right here that we're painting in. So you know that you are on um, inside the palace. So I, I was going to just use the cartoon shot, this right here. But... I didn't want to just cheapen it out by just using the cartoon shot. So I tried to use AI to make it look more realistic. It just didn't work. I asked AI to make the um, palace from the cartoon. It didn't know what I was talking about. It made all kinds of bad pictures. It didn't, didn't look like it at all. And so I decided to create it digitally. And I was just going to use a digital um, version of it. And just, um, and just, you know, create it digitally and have it green screened in or something or in the background and then I thought you know what I want to just make it for real so then I decided how to make all these parts that I can actually print out and make an actual model of it 
because I used to watch how they made movies when I was a kid all the time. I used to love watching them, and they'd have all these cool little models they'd make, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. So that is why I made this uh, little mini Eternia, was because uh, it's going to be my establishing shot for my stop motion video I'm working on, or series I'm working on. Yeah, it's going to be an actual series, not just uh, one video. And it's funny because I was writing the script and I thought, you know what? It's cool and all to have the palace, but like I have in front of you guys, but I really need to have that establishing shot like you see in, in all the cool movies. Oh, I put a floor in this too. Ah, I was going to shove something up there to hold it in place, but there's a floor in this one as well. That's what I get for making the objects too cool. So just making it hollow, I put a floor in it. A floor that no one's ever going to see. <laughs> oh, I got so many little buildings to paint. So many buildings. That's why I was saying dipping went way easier, but this paint's so thick, I don't think I could have sprayed it on it. I would have had to, uh, obviously, uh, thin it out a lot. Ugh, got a chunk of paint in there. One little chunk of paint clogs the whole window. Yes, all the attorney and apartment buildings. People need places to live. I live in eternity. Whoa. All right, I'm going to look at some of you guys' questions in a minute here. My fingers are getting coated with paint. I also paint the bottom of these ones. This one's here, the windows broke out when I cleaned it with the paintbrush. I was like, ah, or the, the uh, toothbrush. I was like, man, man. The good news is this stuff dries really, really quick. Oop. So this terracotta paint dries pretty fast. Okay, I'll check your guys' questions in a second. All right. Hey, Todd. Uh, if found funded in a skill tour, would you review? Oh, I don't know, man. I felt kind of bad last time when you paid for a figure for me. I mean, sure. I appreciate that, man. That was really nice of you to pay for figures so I could uh, review them on my channel. All right, on to the next little building. 3,000 buildings to go.
Wow, you've been a member for seven months now. That is cool, Kel. Another little tower. Lesson number one, try to print them in the color similar to what you want when you're done. <laughs> At least I didn't print them black. That meant a lot harder to uh, paint. Huh, huh. Stand, I can't stand. Oh, too much paint. Too much paint. Take it back. Oh, that brush is dried out. Okay. Just trying to clean up some of that paint with this brush. Trying to think, Kel, what figure was that you asked me to get last time? Was it trap jaw or something else? I don't remember now. I know there was some figure I didn't want to get for new adventures. You're like, if I pay for it, will you get it? Hmm. I should remember these things. Oh, my battery's down to 5%. Let's see, Eric said you get my two comments. Let's see, you have an Instagram message. Nice, I'll have to check that out, Eric. Custom Beast Man. Hey, Todd, how's your day today? Uh, how was church? Church was great. So, Eric, I'm glad you joined us. I was actually going to paint these terracotta orange. But you mentioned yesterday that I should do it pink, so I tried the orange, it looked bad and earlier in the video. And uh, I decided to go with the Filmation pinky color, even though I'm not a fan of pink. But I'm also not a fan of orange that much either, so. It's just funny, I like burgundy. Burgundy is a cool color. And uh, I like some purples. Especially purples that are more blue than purple. Oh, time for the other big building. Bum, bum, bum. This one also has a bridge across the top. It's pretty cool. I'll be smart off the bows and fit in there. It's smaller than the last one. Let's try this one here. And I'll jam this one up there too. Jam on it. It's got a lot of the same features from the other building, as you can see. It's got that same little piece there. Doesn't have all the antenna structure. It's a little bit smaller. A little less weird parts sticking out of it. And again, I could see the Christian Haydenson, uh, is that his name? Uh, Anakin Skywalker battling up there on the top of this bridge. Chasing bad guys with uh, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan! It's 
funny. My my favorite character in all of Star Wars, believe it or not, is uh um oh, no, no, I forget his name. Qui Gon Jinn. Is that his name? Qui Qui Gon Jinn. Uh, the guy played by what is it? Nielsen Lyman. I don't know what his name is. You guys will tell me in the comments. But uh, it's funny too. I didn't realize it till one day I was sitting there thinking about all the different Star Wars characters. As a kid, I always liked Luke. You know, of course, everyone did. You know, and uh, the prequels didn't exist yet. And my favorite one was. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, you know, used to pretend to be a Jedi playing in the woods as a kid, like most kids did. And then, uh, when the prequels came out, I was kind of like, well, that was interesting, you know. And then, uh, now I look back, and now I look back at the prequels with a little more fun looking at them now. And, uh, it's funny how these things that at first you're like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And then you start watching it and thinking about it. And it's like, you know, I actually did like that whole Qui-Gon Jinn storyline they had. I seen this meme of the day. It was pretty funny. And it shows them, uh, instead of uh, staying there and buying parts for Queen, the Queen's ship, just to buy a cheaper ship, sell the parts, and fly back. And it said, the end. That's the end of the movie. End of the show. <laughs> Because, you know, you don't need the rest after that. If he just uh, would have just uh, not brought Annie back. And I didn't never understood why they never got his mom. You know, what was the deal with that? I mean, come on. He's in the Jedi Council now. They had enough money. He's gone back. Paid that guy ten times the price for his mom. Ridiculous. Yoda just didn't like him. I mean, obviously Yoda didn't like him. You saw that played out quite a bit. Yoga. And, you know, it makes you wonder if he would have uh, not have been so dissed by the other Jedi, would he have still turned out the same? Would he have still gone to the dark side? Would he have still, still gone with Duco and all the other stuff like that we saw and become the Darth of Vader that we know? I mean, obviously he had to because it would have been really weird if the prequels came out and all of a sudden the storyline completely changed and he ended up being a good guy the whole time. But it makes you wonder, though, just, you know, just thinking of the storyline, you know, if uh, the Jedi Council would have treated him better and said, no, you're too old to train, you know, and kind of dissed on him a little bit. and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but I've been told. Okay. Let's look at you guys' comments. Ah, Liam Nielsen. Thank you. No, or, uh, what is that? Neeson. Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yes. Thank you, Mike. I knew somebody would know. Of course, it would be Mike Fee, the man with the knowledge. Paint's getting thicker as I'm getting to the end of painting these. Yeah, that was my favorite character. And it's funny too, you think about it, they have that one scene where they poison him in the air. They put that gas in there and they put on those things. They hold their breath, that's what it is, I think. And yeah, they hold their breath. And it's like if they just would have waited another 20 minutes, they'd have been dead. It's like, it's like flies. But it's funny that they held their breath, they clear the air to see what's going on with the Jedi, and then they burst out. It's just said, you know what, let's let's just wait another 20, 30 minutes. What's it gonna hurt anyway? I know, the movie would have ended right then and there, that'd have been the end of it. The Trade Federation. I know you guys are going, what the heck? I thought I'd tuned into a He-Man channel and now he's talking all about Star Wars. What is wrong with this guy? Cal Ness, I live in that tower. 
why aren't I reading the comments? That's a good question. The comments are kind of far on the side, so it's kind of hard to read them all. You can't like He-Man and Star Wars. No. That's funny. I remember the very first movie poster I saw, Star Wars, and they had Luke Skywalker all muscle-bound looking. And uh, I was so disappointed when I went to the theater to watch the movie, and it was this little scrawny kid playing the part. I was like, where's the guy from the movie cover? Where's that guy? I was expecting a guy like Mark Singer from, from, from uh, Beastmaster. Of course, Beastmaster wasn't out yet, but it's what I was imagining in my head, you know. Something like that looking. You know, I didn't see Beastmaster yet, but... but that's what he looked like on the, on the film. I remember standing in line with my grandparents waiting to see Star Wars. Oh, there goes my comments. They just shut off. My iPad has died. Now I won't be able to see your guys' comments for a little while. I can pull up my phone, though, Why I'm uh, doing this. Yes. Okay, this gets painted gray. It stays in there. This one becomes pink. It's weird. I feel like I'm painting blind now that I can't see your guys' comments or see what, my, what you guys are seeing on my screen. I know, too bad I didn't do this video with, with Mike at the same time. Mike could have read the comments and asked the questions to me. That'd been cool. Since you're on here anyway, Mike, I should have just done the whole double sharing. I know we tried it one time to make it work. I couldn't quite get it to work just right, but I'm sure we could figure something out. Okay, that gets done later. Let me take a look here. I of gray skull give me sight beyond sight. There you go. Yes, Scotty uh, Z70. I should have just printed them in uh, in a better color. I use this blue because this blue is kind of very rubbery. See, so check this out. And uh, I printed some super small parts one time for this, and. Uh, um, I like the strength of this and I still have some of this left. It was a little more expensive. I bought it to make somebody one of those, uh, little characters from the He-Man cartoon, uh, the Christmas special, the little dog, um, relay. And so somebody kept asking me, Can you please make me a relay, please, please, please. So finally I bought this blue just to make relay. And it, like I said, it was a little more spendy than the other one, but when I found out the rigidity of it and how strong it was, I thought for these little thin parts, I should probably use that same stuff. And uh, I should have just bought that same stuff in the right color, but yeah, not good planning on my part. I was just thinking about the strength. And besides that, I started printing these before I had the paint color and I thought I'd get a spray paint just spray paint them. I didn't know that I uh, couldn't get this terracotta in spray. That made it way easier just to spray them. Yep. Yep, bad planning. No, oh, there goes He-Man. I got terracotta over my hands. So I can't... Uh... Okay, still got that one to paint. This one to paint, this one to paint, this one to paint, and the rest are all gray or some other color. So cool. We're almost done with the terracotta, then I have to go back and do a second coat. A second coat. Yes, that would be cool to put little lights underneath there. Um, I did think about that at one time, but then I had to drill holes in the board too and have the uh, things placed in the same spot all the time. 
Um, I kind of wanted to be able to move them and change them. So in case I decide to do another video in the future of the city being attacked, I could just make some smash buildings and put them there. And uh, originally I was going to have little landing spots for each building. But then when I realized I had so many buildings, I was like, oh, forget the landing spots. Forget it. So I only have landing spots for the big buildings and everything else just kind of goes into the dirt area. Which we will do here, uh, probably in the next video, is putting it all together. Because then I'll have to put the clear coat on these. Do a couple more coats on some of these little buildings. You know, if I were to put them in white, it would have been better than what I did it in. This is blue is just uh, not suited well for trying to change it all the way to terracotta. Oh, too much paint. Too much paint. It's funny, it's almost the same color as my skin once it's dried on there. That is kind of funny. I mean, it's not exactly, it has a little more pink in it, a little more reddish tone to it. Yep, up, up. Oop. I know, I'm getting all over the place. All it over. Oh, just leave it down. You're staying down. All right, let's go ahead and uh, go back to this and let's put the second coat on this thing. Let's see, is this brush pretty dried out? Yeah, that one's had it. This one's had it into the water. I'll wash all these. Let's get some new brushes. Let's look at your guys' comments really quick. Prove it, Mr. Fee. Make him sing the He-Man theme song. Sure. He man and the masters of the universe. Da 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 He man. There you go. Ray. Okay, let's see if there's enough oomph to hold this still. It's funny, one of my favorite Christmas movies is Jingle All the Way. And so I almost said to my, you're my number one customer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger and it's a Christmas movie. You just can't go wrong. And it's got Phil Hartman in it and it has John Belushi in, or Jim Belushi in it. It's got a good cast. It has Sinbad in it. I mean, come on, Sinbad and Arnold in the same movie. Nope, oh, I gotta re-aim this. I seen this other movie of Sinbad and Phil Hartman. It was pretty good. He was uh, supposed to be his friend from school, a dentist, and uh, 
It was pretty funny. Actually, I forgot the name of that. I think it was called House Guest. It was a pretty good movie. You know, it's funny. My kids and I used to joke about uh, Jingle All the Way. Imagine if uh, they decided to make a new Terminator. Terminator! And instead of having Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor uh, killed by the Terminator, all you have to do is get a hold of Sarah Connor's parents and not let them procreate. So you have a, a neighbor that's a Terminator. It's like Phil Hartman from uh, uh, from uh, Jingle All the Way. Hey, neighbor! Anytime they were supposed to, you know, try to make a child, he could be over there, Parcheesy, you know, and just just being the annoying neighbor. Really, he's a cybernetic, whatever, uh, AI. And his whole purpose is to stop Sarah Connor's parents from ever conceiving her just by being an annoying neighbor. I know it's kind of a weird storyline and probably nobody would like it because there's no violence or anything else. But it'd be funny, you know, as you see uh, the cybernetic Phil Hartman trying to uh, stop them. Now, of course, Phil Hartman is no longer with us. But I remember after watching this jingle all the way thinking that would be hilarious. You could even take... And mix some of the scenes to try to create your own Terminator movie with Arnold and him together. And have that concept. You are the Connors. Let's pay Parcheesi. Of course, Phil Hartman wouldn't have the Terminator accent like Arnold did. But you get the idea. You get the idea. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. Cybernetic organ is what he called himself in the movie. Sorry, I can't see your guys' comments at all right now. I'll pull them down in a minute and take a look and see what you guys said. If you think about it, you wouldn't have to go and kill everybody. All you have to do is just stop them from conceiving Sarah Connor. That's it. No violence required. I see this YouTube video is pretty messed up. It was uh, the Terminator, and he goes back to Jesus' time, and it's pretty funny. It's uh, And the very last line of the video is, he'll be back. It was like, that's funny. I get this one chunk painted. I will look at your guys' comments before I start redoing all of the buildings. And everybody quickly exited the YouTube video saying, Oh, we already watched them paint all the buildings. Not again. Not again. No. I'm not going back to watch them repaint the same thing again. But the cool thing is, after they paint the buildings, then you will get to the bridges and the cool sculpture that is in the center of the mini Eternia on the edge of town. So I'm kind of excited to paint that and see how it comes out. That'll be the last thing I paint. It's last on the list. That'll be the last thing I ever do. Anyway, hopefully the last thing I ever do, that'd be not so good. All right, let's look at you guys' comments. Let's see, I'm okay with Carrot Top. He's not funny, but not actively evil. I would trade Phil for Joe Rogan any day, though. Just be the annoying neighbor. 
Not a big Christmas fan in general, honestly. Yeah, but Jingle All the Way was hilarious. It wasn't really a Christmas film, except for the fact that he was trying to buy him a present. But it was pretty funny. Scrooge and Disney's A Christmas Story were my favorite. Nice. Oh, Jim Belushi is the dollar store John Belushi. You know, I think living in his brother's shadow was probably really hard his whole, his whole career. Yeah, that would be tough. You can use any other tones on this or just straight color. That is an excellent question. I'm hoping to use some uh, game color ink later on. I'm going to test it out and see how it works. I'm thinking of using the skin wash right here. And maybe the black wash on some stuff too and see how it comes out. But I'm going to practice on some of the parts that are, are uh, broken and use it on those first and see how it looks. And the bridges are going to be actually gray. Um, the watchtowers or guard towers will be two different shades of gray. A darker gray on top and a lighter gray on the sides. And then the bridges, or not the bridges, the small little... Um, Archways would just be just straight gray. Oh, no, this will be tan. That's right. I forgot I painted it tan. So the archways will be tan. And the bridges will be gray. And the uh, um, guard tower will be gray. Still re-deciding re what color to make the bridges. I guess the bridges could be this terracotta color. And then make the archways tan. And... Uh, Yeah, so the archways will be this tan color right here, that you can't see, right there. So that matches the archways I've already made um, in large scale, full scale. And then the guard towers will be, like I said, two-tone gray. Dark gray for the roof and light gray for the side, so it matches the, the giant version. The 35 times version. All right, let's try this one now. Too big. Oh, that's wet. Too small. There we go. And, uh, oh. And the pieces were flying everywhere. There we go. Now I got my chopsticks in there. It is ready to be painted. Oh. Maybe I should have gone with it in the middle instead of. I seemed to work better last time. Yeah, it works better. Otherwise, it's trying to fling it apart as I try to paint. so long should have hired one of my grandkids to do this part here you guys I want you to slop paint all over this and when you're done slop paint on it again one more time two coats just like when you wax my car oh grandpa they don't wax my car yep That'd be child labor problems, right? It's like it was funny. My oldest boy, who now is in his uh, upper 30s, he, uh, one time I came home from work and I drove up and he was, he was washing the car. And it looked really good. He was doing a really good job on washing the car. And so I said, whatever your mother's paying you, I'll pay you double. Because that looks so good. You're doing a great job. Um, so whatever your mom's paying you, 
you get double. And he came into the house all excited and and uh, he goes, okay, the car's all done, dad. I said, great. So I turned to my wife and said, what are you paying him? She goes, nothing. I said, well, zero times two is still zero. Sorry, kiddo. And then I found out what the deal was is he got to use the car if he washed it. That's why he was washing it. But I felt bad because, you know, he didn't say to me, well, mom's not paying me anything. You know, then I would have said, okay, I'll give you five, 10 bucks or whatever for doing it. But I felt bad because, you know, <laughs> here he is scrubbing the car, doing a good job. And I'll pay you whatever your mom, I didn't know she was paying him nothing. I just got home from work, so I had no idea. But I, I stuck to what I said. He got nothing, two times zero. But he got to take the car and uh, hang out with his friends, which I didn't know that was the payment, you know. I guess he could have stayed out twice as long. You could stay out twice as long. Your mom said 10, you can get to midnight. But anyway, he's all growing up now with kids of his own. It's so weird to think that so much time goes by so quick. Oop. Yeah. Sometimes it kind of makes me sad thinking about the old days, the old good times we used to have. If any of you guys have little kids, take the time. It'll be gone before you know it. It was fun though. We went out to uh, eat the other day, Friday. We went to, uh, we went to uh, um, the Ram restaurant. I offered to pay, he goes, I got it dad. It's like, okay, that's cool. So he, he ended up paying for our lunch. Yeah, he's a good kid. All right. Let's check out your guys' comments instead of me reminiscing on these old stories. That is true, Scotty. Ah, two times 10 is 20, not 12. Yeah, I was thinking he got two hours from eight to 10, so yeah. So if he stayed out twice as long, he stayed out to midnight. That's funny. Your math stinks, he bro. That's hilarious. Yep, yeah, good times. It's funny, I didn't know this, but him and his brother used to sneak and actually take the car. Um, I guess uh, they would take the car, they would, they would, uh, they would sneak out and roll the car down the driveway in neutral and then not start it till it got around the corner because we lived on a slight hill. I found out when they were adults, they told me, yeah, dad, we actually used to take the car all the time. It's like, what? Yeah, we'd put it in neutral and roll it down the hill. And then once we got down the hill far enough, we would start it so you wouldn't hear it. Hmm. Yep, I should tell their teenage kids all those stories. You know, you know what your parents used to do? <laughs> oh, I had to go back and fix that one some more. I just gotta do half at a time and stop trying to rush it. I keep trying, trying to do the whole thing instead of just doing half at a time. Do the upper half, then do the lower half. Okay, let's check out your guys' comments. That's why people have grandkids, to get back at their own kids. 
No, oh, Mikey's a sneak his parents' car too. No worries, I'm a mathlete. That is awesome, Scotty. Oh, Delaxorian, I'm sorry to hear that. That really stinks. Let him sleep in the car then. Oh, wax, I only polish. Mike, thanks for me know. Charles and Kale, thank you again for the donations. That was very kind of you. I don't feel bad for Scrooge McDuck. Pi Day is Thursday. Nice. I'm back. All the cats in. Christmas? How long was I gone? Let's see. Charles said that I see his comments. Mm. I have that movie. Oh, I'm going to go back to the beginning of this. Okay. Let's get back to painting. So I can move him without getting pain on him. I'll just knock him down this way. Ugh. So where this paint's really rough, it actually feels like um, a flower pot, how the terracotta flower pots feel. It actually has that feeling to it. Which makes sense, it's supposed to, because it's terracotta, but it's just weird. It's weird. Well, since I did the He-Man theme song, we're going to have to do the Darth Vader one, too. It's like something from Star Wars, doesn't it? Definitely. I could see that being posted on some kind of evil, evil base. The evil base. All right, time for another light. Those lights just keep dying. They're like flies, they keep dying. Just the top half, Todd. Just the top half. So I never painted the bottom one at all. Oh, oh. Ah, just leave it now. I know I can't, uh, not that I can wait, but it's gonna be funny when my granddaughters come back over. They always like to see my leftover paint mess. And you play this little game where they take and say all the colors and point to it. And once in a while, they'll still be wet paint in one. And then my one granddaughter will crack up laughing and she just loves to stick her finger into the wet paint. And so now they have always cowboy hats instead of cups. I wonder if she's going to think and what she's going to say. She's a little older now, so we'll see if she uh, makes some comment about me filling all these cowboy hats with paint instead of the cups. Grandpa, what are you doing? I do have a friend. Um, her name is Anne, and she actually also never had kids. She uh, decided to uh, not get married. So she never had any kids. But she does have lots of nieces and nephews. And she spoils them 
like you would not believe. She's like the coolest aunt ever. So Delaxorian, I don't know if you have brothers and sisters, but being a cool uncle is a well-placed job. I had a really cool uncle as a kid. His name was Chuck. He was awesome. And uh, he became my kid's uncle too, obviously, even though he was, wasn't their uncle. He was their great uncle, but my kids used to love hanging out with Chuck too. So you can also be the coolest uncle in the world too. And uh, sometimes it's uh, pretty beneficial to be the cool uncle because as they become teenagers, they're going to want someone to talk to. And it's easier to talk to your uncle than it is to talk to your parents sometimes. So being the cool uncle was a, cool, a great role to have. So hopefully you have some kids in your life that way. Let me take a look at the comments and see if you send them back. Oh man, I'm sorry, man. Well, there is one last thing for you that I can think of. And that is, uh, when I was a kid, I was in foster homes. I was actually almost adopted, or, uh, not really. Yeah, I was, I was adopted almost three times out when I was a kid. And, uh, one of my foster families in California, they were awesome. And actually I patterned myself after the father from that family. And, uh, he was a great guy. Um, he was uh, an x-ray technician. And when we were younger, we all we wanted to play soccer. And all the soccer teams were full. And because all the teams were full, he decided to become a coach so we could play. And otherwise, he wouldn't be able to play because there was no more teams available. So he made his own team and became the coach. And that was how I got to play soccer as a kid. It was pretty cool. I spent... Uh, about a year and a half with his family. And I remember he would take me to work sometimes and I'd meet all the, the women out the desk and stuff and they'd give me donuts and thought it was funny. Feeding the kid donuts, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I couldn't believe how many donuts I could put away for being such a little kid. So even though it's not ideal, there are still lots of opportunities, you know, big brothers, uh, organizations, foster care, even adoption if that comes up. Now I'm not sure of your age, but there are other ways to have kids besides biological. In fact, my uh, second, uh, my first stepdad's my, my mom's second husband, he was awesome. He always wanted sons. I always wanted a dad. We hit it off great. It was really cool. So there is those opportunities once in a while. Again, I don't know your whole history, so I really can't tell you completely, but you still have something to give, man. You can still help kids somewhere. I'm sure you're a great guy, and like I said, there's, there's probably lots of kids you could probably help and enjoy, have fun with. If you want to, if that's your thing. If you're like, nope, kids are a mess, I understand that too. I have reached that point sometimes. <laughs> sometimes when my granddaughter comes over, it's like, ah, can we have a break? Didn't we just see you like yesterday and the day before and the day before that? Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, we had this one guy in the apartment. He was a single bachelor guy, and he kind of took me under his shoulder, and he looked sort of Bruce, Bruce Lee-ish. And I remember all these kids were doing the karate and stuff in the front by the basketball hoop, and um, he took me aside, and he showed me how to do stuff and told me, don't tell anybody. He said, uh, you don't show it off. It's not what it's about. It's not about showing off. And I remember he also taught me how to dive, too. Uh, we had a pool at the apartment building. I remember he would pick me up and threw me in and uh, it was kind of cool. He was teaching me all kinds of stuff. And I remember it was always funny because he was a single bachelor. He had different women over all the time that were just amazing women. It was just unbelievable. It's like, dude, 
Yeah, I was only in uh, like fourth. No, nope, no, nope, take that back. I was in seventh grade at the time. But yeah, it was funny. He'd be at the pool. Awesome guy. Martial arts specialist. And uh, d different attractive women all the time. It's funny to think he's probably only in his mid-twenties, this guy. And to me, he was an old guy because I was a kid. Oh, Charles, it's sad, man. Yeah, it's hard when your parents pass away. Okay, that's a good question. Um, they actually wanted to adopt me, but uh, my, my mom ended up uh, 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 taking me back. So she got all the state things approved to get her kids back. And so I didn't get adopted by them and uh, ended up going back to my mom. And so that is my story. Otherwise I would have stayed in California and not in the great Pacific Northwest. And I met my wife here in the Pacific Northwest. So I probably went to met her, went to have the kids I have now. So I guess things worked out for the better. Boy, getting some, some deep stuff tonight. Counseling sessions with Todd. All right, let's see what else we got going on. The windows are plugging up. Don't plug the windows. Oh, this one has a whole entire chunk that came off. I guess I should have probably primed these. Good thing I won't be throwing them around, right? Or getting my grandkids to chew on. Pretty good. I think this one gets to go down to the bottom box now to be clear coated. I think I got one of them complete. Hooray! Let's see if I pulled the paint off the top or not. Nope, I didn't. All right, it's the first building to move down to the second tier. Oh, my fingers grasp some of the paint. That one stays up a little longer. Gotta find some that are more dry. I keep grabbing the ones that are still too wet. This kind of reminds me of the of the uh, of the Daily Planet, the way it looks, kind of with the ball on top. Yeah. 
yeah, this paint just keeps coming off. I uh, should have, shoulda, coulda, woulda. All right, note to you guys, if you guys are gonna paint your resin parts, do you put the, the, um, the um, primer on first? It's funny, I had it in my hands and I was gonna do it, and I thought, ah, eh, it will work. No primer needed. Now I'm really rethinking that thought. Hopefully once I put the clear coat on, that paint will stay on better. Another one down. I'm almost afraid to check the comments. <laughs> All the last things people were saying are so sad. Another one down. All right, let's check the comments. Thanks, Kill, for the support of the He-Man channel. Yes. Oh, man. Thanks, Kel. That is very kind of you. Yeah, my, my mom's still around, but many of you guys remember in the past I mentioned that my dad passed away, but... I still have my mom. She's still kicking. It's funny, my siblings and I joke about it. You know, I say she's going to outlive us all. Yeah, she's pretty tough. She's ex-army and uh, tough woman. are making it down to the bottom box pretty soon they'll all be down there that'd be cool this one's still a little too wet on the bottom hopefully I don't ruin the paint by touching it No, don't clog up the window. Actually, it's not like it's already done. Actually, there's a couple spots that's still need to be touched up on here. Yeah, these windows all broke out on this one. It's like a bunch of teeth missing.
Can't believe they're finally finishing up. So, like people have mentioned already, smart idea to, to actually produce them in the color you want or close to it. Would have saved me a whole lot of time. Would have printed these in, in a tan brown or in a light pink or something else instead of uh, painting these over and over again. Oh, wrong brush. That one's needs to be cleaned. Into the water. So there's this uh, person I've seen online. Really cool. Her name is Allison Tabitha. If you get a chance, look her up. She does cosplay. And I showed my wife yesterday. And she is amazing. Um, there's articles on her that talk about her being the master of disguise. And I tell you that she does Johnny Depp really well and a bunch of his characters. And she does uh, Natalie Portman, really good job doing her characters. She does um, a lot of Wonder Woman stuff, which she actually looks like Wonder Woman. And there's some other characters she does too. Um, but her her cosplay is amazing. I cannot, I cannot believe how good it is. Um, she had somebody make her the gold costume from Wonder Woman 1984. And it just looks spectacular, and with with her face coming out of the out of the armor, um, with her Wonder Woman esque makeup on, she looks so much like um, the actress. Oh, I gotta go refix that one again. I just pulled off a chunk of paint on it. Right when I was getting ready to set it down. Again, her name is uh, Allison Tabitha. So check her out if you guys want to see some really cool cosplay. Um, amazing artist. I cannot believe. It's like she almost paints people's faces on her face. It's so weird. So she must know how to draw faces really well. And uh, it's just crazy how much she looks like the people a lot of times that she does it. Now she does some some guys too. Obviously, Johnny Depp's a guy, but she does um, Hayden Christensen, and she did some other ones too. But they're not as good. Um, the Johnny Depp one, she nails every time. It's really cool. But then again, her face has to kind of look sort of like the person she's doing too on top of it, and those people she does kind of look like. Yeah, she did one where she was a. Uh, uh, Obi-Wan too, and it was just okay. The Obi-Wan one wasn't spectacular. The costume was cool, but the makeup job wasn't spectacular because obviously her face is still very feminine. I got her nose hair in this one. Trim those nose hairs. All right, see you guys' comments. Yeah, the light bulbs would look cool. Thanks, Charles. If you paint the windows, they can't open them. Yes, don't paint the windows. Don't clog the windows. Did you see my last comment? Uh, oh, Mike says, Hebrew, you're an awesome person. I'm glad I got to know you. I was adopted by my grandparents when I was a baby. Went back to my mom at age seven through eight. Nice. Never had, Delaxorian said, never had a dad and a nursing home. Oh man, Delaxorian. Yeah, would have been the next Bruce Lee. With Steven Seagal. Sorry to hear about your dad, Charles. 
Oh man. Yeah, a lot of comments. Oh, good night, Mike. I don't know where you say good night, but I see what else is saying good night to you. Oh, Charles is going. Good night, Charles. Okay, let me just get back to painting. I'm almost done on the home stretch. Only a few of these little apartment houses left to go. I don't see where this one uh, still needs to be painted. Must be somewhere. I'll just throw some on here. Oh, there it is. There it is. I didn't want to just leave it on there for no reason at all. All right. Down to the next tier. Yeah, these corners are what's killing me. I think it's I waited too long from when I printed them to when I'm painting them without doing a good thorough clean in between. Because I've been touching them and showing people and everything else. And so I probably got finger oils on every single corner of these things. I probably should have gave them all an alcohol bath before starting painting these. My wife's eating chips or something into the room. I wonder what kind of chips she's eating. Maybe it's crackers. Those new crackers they have that are crunchy, chippy, chippy like crackers. They're made by Ritz, I think, or something. It could be those. All right. Only a couple more left to go. And on to the bridges. That was funny. They had this movie a long time ago called Bridges of Madison County. I never saw it. But it was one of those movies where it was a love triangle of some sort, and and uh, um, they have a oh, what is his name? How could I forget his name? He was in a movie Every Which Way But Loose. He's been in a ton of westerns. Anyway, I guess when he filmed it, he was like pretty old and crusty. And my mom took my wife to see it. And my wife's like, I saw these old people on the screen just kissing and stuff. And she's like, it was horrible. It was kind of funny. But I'm never a fan of those love triangle movies. They've always bothered me. Like one I can't stand is The Notebook. Oh. I, I One time I started watching it um, for the first time I ever seen it. I didn't know what it was I was watching. Happened to walk into the room. It was on TV. And so we just kind of sat down and we were watching it. And, uh, halfway through I don't know if you guys have ever seen it or not and and so it shows this lady kind of attractive it's that Rachel McAdams or whatever and she's dating the guy who played Cy Cyclops from X-Men the first movie and it's like this is a nice story I like this this is great you know and then uh she says she's gonna go visit her old town and he says to her do I have to worry about this she's like nah you don't have to worry about it he's like okay so she goes off she visits her old town and while she's there, she ends up sleeping with her old boyfriend because it rains outside and they come in and she, you know, all this horrible scenes. It's like, ah, 
what happened to Cyclops? He's just chopped liver. Now, of course, everyone who's watched the movie from the beginning, they all think it's a super romantic love story because they know it, that he was her first love. But it's like, what about the other guy? You know? I mean, yes, I kind of get the whole idea of she's back with her first love, but she's cheating on the other guy. The guy she met in the hospital. And so I've never liked that movie because, you know, I mean, that's just messed up. It's like, imagine your girlfriend or wife going to a class reunion and next thing you know, she gets she hooks up with her old boyfriend who was kind of the, you know, jerk of the town in a sports car, dead-end loser job. Yeah. Urgh. Now I clogged the window in my irritation. Anyway. Anyway, not my problem, not my movie, not my life, but just, uh, just cannot stand those kinds of movies. All right, I think that is it. Let me just go ahead and just paint these ones really quick so I can use it for uh, tests later to test the um, shading and see how it looks. So I'll paint this broken one here. And then I will paint a big glob on here just so I can uh, test it later. I use this yucky paintbrush because I don't care. Because this is my extra broken one I had to remake. I just want to see how the shading looks on it. So in case I decide to do it on the real one, I can test it here first. And I will throw it in the box so I can uh, paint it with the clear coats just like all the others. There we go. All right. On to some grays. Let me check your guys' comments. I guess when it rains, I lock my wife in the attic. I mean, out of love, <laughs> I'd rather watch Arnold blow stuff up. Yeah, right? Jamie had chips when I was making a video laughing out loud. I heard you, you heard the bag rattling and crunching. Are you using a Barbie cowboy hat to hold your paint? That's an interest. That's uh, William. That's funny. I, I bought all these hats on Amazon. See, I got a whole bunch of them, and uh, they don't fit with my figures at all. Um, I tried shrinking a pink hat and making it smaller. I think a set had like 99 hats in it 33 hats of each color, or some stupid thing like that. Well, I couldn't return it because I already ruined one of the hats. And it's like, now what am I going to do? So. I couldn't find any paint cups the other day, and so I just grabbed them and started filling, using the hats for my paint, you know. So, I know, kind of expensive paint caps, but what the heck. But I can reuse the gray ones from yesterday. Yesterday. Bum, 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 bum. So let's see, we got our gray. We have our graphite. And we have our dark gray, where is it? Mm, I don't, there it is, dark gray. So let's go ahead and, uh, you know what? That's right, I was gonna paint the bridges. The terracotta too. As you can see the bridge here is terracotta already. But yet I'm gonna paint this gray I'm painting these tan, that's right. Tan. Okay. Decision time.
Okay. I have decided. I have decided. I'm going to paint all the bridges tan. And I'm going to paint all of these tan. I'm going to paint these two-tone gray. And I'm going to paint this thing graphite. So now that I have all my colors, let's get to cracking. Let's start with the tan first. That's what I'm using most of. Now, I think I had tan in this one yesterday. So I can just keep filling this up with more tan. Yep, that's the same color. Too rough. Gotta find a nice soft bristle brush to do the trick. I won't scrape the paint back off. I'm running out of brushes. I've used too many today. This one. This is the one I'm going to use. Cowboy Barbie painting the town tan. <laughs> yep. So I'm not going to use graphite at all. Set that aside. We'll put the grays here for now. I'm done with my pink terracotta. So on to tan. Burp. My light die already? Yes. Oh, these lights just don't last very long for a long video. Okay. That's the brush I was using. Yep, that's tan. I guess this can go. Yeah, that has paint on it still. Into the water. First coat of tan. Probably first of three, I'm guessing. Now this bridge, I actually built a thing onto it right there on the end, instead of having it separate. And this just goes right up against the land right there. Next bridge, and it's going to be tan. I know, shocking, huh? You weren't expecting that, were you? That bridge number two would also be tan. This really tans my hide. I know, it's supposed to be chappy or hide, but whatever. You can toss tan in there too. All right, and this one won't stand on its own, I don't think. Nope, I'll have to fix that side later. And this one is going to be tan. This is the one that goes up to the um, palace. This is our palace ramp.
Oop, sorry, out of frame. Out of frame, man, out of frame. It's funny, the part I sanded, you can feel the paint sticks way better to that than anywhere else. See, I want to take almost just one coat only where I sanded it. I guess using a 400 grit sandpaper would have a much better choice to do with this and some alcohol. I'm getting terracotta all over my parts for my fingers. Ugh. Now for these little guys. Burp, 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 burp. Rup, rup, rup. One side at a time. Oh, stand. Well, while I'm waiting for these tan parts to dry, I'm gonna go grab my tan arch so I can show you guys. Fallout series. Well, I'll have to check that out. Garbage can's going. Oh, there it is. I put it under my desk, so I was standing into it. So I decided to grab one of the arches that I made full size so you guys can see. Those who have not seen it yet, this. Erp, big old monstrosity is one of those little arches right there <clears throat> so these little arches there is this big giant arch here and that's why I was saying that uh, if I was to scale up those buildings they'd be humongous because this is just the arch scaled up to uh, action figure size so the mini stuff is really mini, 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 mini. So kind of cool. So you guys can see the size difference uh, between the giant arch and the small little mini arch. Oops. Now I'm dropping parts. All right, let's see. That's still really wet. I guess we'll move on to gray. Let's see. We want gray, gray for the sides. That's way more than enough. And that's for these little towers here. Towers of power! And the top's gonna be a darker gray. Again, I made one of these full size too, and it's just monstrous. It takes up the majority of this table in this area here. 
So I'm not going to bring in to show you guys because it's just too big to squeeze in this little area, all the paint everywhere. If I was to bring it in, I'd probably end up drop or knocking paint over and stuff. So not going to bring it over. But if you want, if you have a computer, you can search my videos and look up Guard Tower and see what it looks like. The full size scale one for actual action figures. It's so big you can drive the um, battle ram through it. Even though during the video I kept calling it the attack track, it's actually the battle ram. So a battle ram will actually drive through this hole here of the, of the full scale one. The um, classics battle ram. Well, the, um, of course, the original Battle Ram fits through it even, even easier because it's smaller than the Classics one. But yes, the Classics Battle Ram will fit through the doorway of the full scale, size scale one of this. It's huge. It took uh, four spools of uh, plastic to print the full size one. And I will not be making any more, but I did tell somebody that um, when I'm done with my video, I may end up selling it as is the one that I made for the for the um, video shoot. So someone may get that giant one. The side walls are super thin though, so don't expect to. Uh, the front walls though are really thick. The front walls are monstrous. The side walls though are pretty flimsy. No. So it was funny. Yesterday, my granddaughter had her birthday, one of them. And uh, it was pretty funny because uh, they had 10. She just turned nine. So she's nine, year old, nine, nine years old. They had uh, like 18 little screaming girls, no, screaming kids. Um, some were boys. Some Like my grandson was there and a couple other boys were there. Most of them were girls. And I guess last night they all spent the night at a big slumber party. And my wife this time won the birthday party. She bought them a scavenger hunt game with cards. And you pull the cards up. You have to go find the whatever is on the card for the scavenger hunt. And I guess they stayed up all night playing the scavenger hunt game. I did give her a sorceress figure though. And all my kids kind of groaned. And like, really dad? Really? I said, yeah, yeah. And then, then my one son's like, you just couldn't help yourself, could you? I said, nope. And, uh. I said, don't worry, I got four of them, one for each one of the grandkids. You'll all get one soon. <laughs> they all kind of laughed. Um, my grandson, of course, loves the He-Man figures. The granddaughters, um, they think it's cool, but it's not their favorite like it is with the grandson. But so far, I've only bought them uh, Evil Lynn, um, She-Ra, and Tila. I think they only have one Evil Lynn, though they each don't have one. But I think they have both have a Tila and both have a uh, um, She-Ra. So, all right, we'll set that there. Ugh, what a mess. Now I got gray over my fingers too. I've got gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is still way too wet to paint that one. This one still has a lot of wetness. This one's probably okay to paint. So let's see if this brush is still soft. It is. Cool. And this time I will also cover that little spot there. And we'll just do the sides here and the bottom. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of coats. I may have to go down and clear coat it and then bring it back up to finish painting it because I think I'm wiping the paint off with the brush instead of just applying it. No, it ain't going to stand. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. We're not going to make you guys sit and watch me paint all these uh, last few little parts. You guys get the idea. And the next video will be me putting it together after I've clear coated everything. And I'll have it in a spot so I can show you guys the full size pieces too that go along with it for the video shoot. And we can do some cool comparisons and I will show you guys some of my plans for how cool this is going to be once it's all ready to uh, shoot 
the video. My establishing shots and my close-up shots. So, I'll only check the comments one more time. Let me paint these last two. I'm really quick first, then I'll check the comments. See what you guys have. Because it's going to take time for these ones to get done. Yeah. Okay, let's check those comments. No gloves. Yeah, I've tried to use gloves before. It's just a mess. It's just easier to wash my hands. This paint is not oil based, it's the cheap craft paint. And then I spray it with uh, these clear paints right here. Either I use my satin, which is uh, pretty good, or I use my matte finish. The matte finish I use mostly for most things. And then I use the satin when I want just a little shine on it. I think I'm going to use the satin this time on the buildings. I use the flat all over the whole entire base of it except for with a, where the um, where the palace sits. I painted that cement with a super shiny, 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 um, two times shiny. And uh, so I didn't use this, I used something else. So they'll be coated in this stuff. Uh, probably uh, this first and this second. I'm not sure which way I'll do it. We'll try it out and see. And so I'll do that off camera and I'll finish painting these up. And then I'll have another video sometime soon to put it all together and show you guys the final product. Anyway, thanks for watching. And let's see, Mike says, holy cow, gonna be totally original story written by the devs, takes place in LA. Really gonna rewrite the story? I hate when they do that. I take a video game and rewrite it. I'm watching that movie, uh, Gran Turismo, right now. It looks pretty cool, but it's not really based on the video game. It's based on the story of uh, of a contest they had. My bridge should be here Tuesday. Nice, Mike. Bridges of Eternia. The love triangle of Tila, He-Man, and Adam. That's funny. If Tila doesn't know that's the same guy... That is hilarious. It's almost like when Clark was dating two women, one as Superman and uh, one as Clark, dating Lana as Clark and dating uh, uh, Lois Lane as Superman. That was so messed up. She should have slapped him hard when she found figured out that he was Superman. What? You were dating Lana at the same time? <laughs> anyway. Oh, good stuff. Let's see, Cowboy Barbie painting the town tent, yeah. A cowboy cake for her birthday, yeah, we could do that. Collection of paint holding hats. All right, anyway, like they say in the 1987 movie, good journey, and if you enjoy any of my videos, please share them. That helps the channel more than anything else. And uh, the Fallout show will be non-interactive version of Fallout 5. The head, the only thing that looks good. All right. Anyway, until next time, good journey, you guys. Bye now.